So my title of the talk is a bit generic. So uh, it's advanced compilation topics. So, and it's even more generic, the abstract. Um, but I want to talk about some features that people ask, can you do this and you know, can you do that with a compiler? Uh, that might be, uh, I, I can be able to answer them. And then also Tom will give a demo at the end talking about that. So remember like what uh, Tom showed, which is uh, you know, the, the compiler is like a layered system where you have some Wolfram language, we translate that uh, into some AST that then we do you know, these macro system expansion analysis, closure analysis. Uh, so the, some of those were you know, kind of used by Brenton. We then convert it into this low form you know, intermediate representation. Um, oh, I should say one thing. So one thing is the compiler, the, the stuff that I'm talking about is not really for uh, you know, like generic users. It's more like, oh, you know, what's, it, what's inside? How, how does it work? Or how can you use it to do whatever you want to work? So uh, you know, some of this stuff maybe you know, if, 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 you know, if you're happy with, func you know, with Mathematica uh, not using the compiler, that's fine. But this is more how to develop and build on top of the compiler. So after we do this untyped IR, we do type inference, which is a big chunk of our kind of technology. Then we do like function resolution and, and other optimizations. And then we generate, you know, LLVM or C++. You know, we have this uh, Wolfram runtime library that we need at which Mark talks about, and then also then we finally generate CPU or WebAssembly, and we're in the work of generating GPU and FPGA. There's a few challenges for that. Um, but the most important thing is it's extendable. So at any point, you can add extra uh, kind of components, and then you can just weave them in into the system. So. Uh, so even in the language part, so essentially like, you know, kind of what uh, Brenton was talking about, he defined this as like, redefine what derivative means. You can think of that as a different language from the Wolfram language. You're, you're still writing most of the stuff in Wolfram language, but derivative of one means something different. Uh, but, but that's kind of what we do is we, we extend it. So, that, and, and a lot of these components are independent. Um, and then, we, you know, when the type inference, even in the type inference, uh, what we do is, you know, we have some default type environment, and then we do some analysis. We do, you know, we look at the Wolfram, uh, we look at the program, we generate lists of constraints, we solve them, and then uh, kind of resolve some functions. But even within that, uh, we are able to essentially do, to add user type environments. So, or override uh, certain types that are in, in, in the system. Uh, so this kind of is important. Like for example, if you're, uh, if you wanna, if you're on a x80, you know, a 64-bit machine and you wanna cross compile to Raspberry Pi or you wanna cross compile to, you know, a 32-bit system, you'd use a, you know, you'd either use a different default type environment or, you know, you'd define your own type environment. Or maybe you need plus to be, you know, means something different, then you could just redefine what plus means. And you don't need to use, you know, like down values or whatever. Um, so what, what this talk is about is essentially how to extend the system by adding other languages support and other external libraries. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the other stuff. Um, the, uh, you know, if you're interested, we can talk later. Um, so I think that's, <laughs> so, um, so for that, I need to go to a notebook. So, right, so I don't think I need to magnify, but let's see. All right. Um, so for that, l l let me just kind of, uh, so I do need this thing. Um, actually, can everybody see? I mean, I, I think it probably, 
All right, this is better. So in, in this function, um, I have like the sum program, and I'm just extending the, so first of all, you can say compile program. You don't have to compile one function, and compile program would allow you to uh, define external functions or define multifunctions. Uh, but here I'm defining, okay, what is a, I'm, gonna, I'm defining two functions. One is called C backtick malloc. Uh, so this is, you know, malloc in C. This is essentially, you know, how you would call libc. So, you know, I'm defining a, a C backtick malloc, uh, and the actual name of it is really malloc. Uh, this is kind of like a Mathematica form of it. Uh, or giving it some context. And then I'm also defining a native primitive function, C free, which, uh, you, know, it's, you know, you can use it. But then you could do, essentially, you know, you know, use these free within your program. So you, I'm allocating, I have some program that takes some size, it allocates that size, and then, you know, it casts that information into an array because malloc returns a void, void star, so you need to do this casting. And then I'm accessing the first element, which is undefined, but it's, it's okay. And then I free it. Um, so, so I can do that, I can compile it, and I can generate some code. And actually, like, probably every time you call this, it's gonna, it can generate any value. Um, so, so essentially, you know, if, if you want to program C, but within Mathematica, you know, you could, you could do that. Uh, you could do more fancy stuff, you know, like for example, you can have a, a function called alloc, which does a, you know, does a malloc and then a free, which performs a free, and then a set element, which takes a, you know, a, a pointer, a position, and a value, and then sets that. And obviously you can do this polymorphically so that, you know, you could, put in any value at any index. Uh, and then I get element function. So in here I can allocate five elements, I get a pointer, I can set the second uh, position to one, and I can get that back, right? Or I, you know, I can put that to be, you know, 67 or something. Um, so essentially now I'm escaping uh, to C. Now, uh, this is quite useful in a lot of cases. Um, you know, primarily, you know, if you, if you just kind of want to write C or, you know, you're generating, you're kind of generating C on the fly or, or, or code like that, you can actually do that in, in this language. So the other thing that, yeah. It's the operating system. Right. So there's other interesting things. So. Um, which is you can integrate with other languages that generate LLVM IR. So we're kind of built on top of, well, we, we could use LLVM IR. So we can leverage, you know, programming languages that actually generate LLVM IR. So one popular example is Rust. So I'm here going to define like some code that generates some uh, LLVM IR, and I'm going to have a Rust program. So um, so I'm going to just define that, and this is a string. You know, LVM string is some string of of, of you know some string of data. Um, but then I can put in that string directly into my program. So I can say LVM string, uh, you know, that variable, and then I can use that. So I define in here. I defined a whoops. That's not what I wanted. In 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 in. In here, I defined a square function, so I can use that from within my code. So I'm gonna call the square with some argument, which is a real 64, and whenever I call that, I can get, you know, but essentially, you know, you can have a, if you have a famous Rust library or, you know, some framework or whatever, you could do that, right? The, interest, the other interesting thing is uh, the ability to compile or use C++ code within your, your, your program. Um, so here, the same idea, you know, you compile to uh, using Clang to LLVM IR, and in here I'm defining another square function, and that square function, uh, you know, it's just, it's just there, but I can use it in the same way, 
Now ignore this error message, I think. You know, I, I need to set a flag or something to disable that. Um, but, you know, essentially I put in that LVM string and then I can, again, use it. So that, that's great. Uh, now you can define more complicated functions. So in here I have a function that's a, a mean. Uh, so, so this is also like, you know, you don't need to use library link, any of that sort of stuff. You, you, you know, you can just use C string directly in your program. Uh, but, you know, here I'm defining a mean that just averages the values. Um, and again, I can, I can essentially, you know, the, this mean function takes a packed array of real 64s. Uh, you do need to do some of these casting, but I think those are, you know, can be simplified later on. Um, and this code, you know, the, the LVM string is, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, has like the loops and stuff like that. Uh, and I can call it, and I can compare that against, uh, you know, a, the Mathematica mean function. So here I have a compiled function. So this is essentially calling the compiled C code. Uh, so the compiled function is, you know, uh, you know, 2x or whatever slower than, um, than the mean function in, in Mathematica. So I can be more fancy. For example, I can use SIMD. Uh, so SIMD is just vector instructions. Um, and I can use this library called xsimd uh, to use that. So this is a bit more complicated code. But I can bind that, you know, you can embed that in. Uh, this code didn't change at all, but, but the LVM string did change. Um, and so it generates, you know, a, a lot more code, but when I evaluate that on the, you know, system, you know, on the system, uh, I'd get, you know, uh, you know, something closer to Mathematica's implementation. Mathematica uses, you know, SIMD and you know parallel programming, so it would get. That's why it would get more speed up. Um, so, kind of close to this. So the other thing that people ask is like, oh, you know, I, if only I had C plus plus seventeen, I can do this sort of stuff. <laughs> if only I have. Uh, so this is using C plus plus twenty, uh, which is not. Uh, so, and it's essentially similar to what uh, Brenton was doing, is just kind of leveraging C++. But essentially I have this regular expression uh, which recognizes dates, you know, year, month, day, and it generates a, uh, and it, and it, and it generates, compiles that regular expression at compile time. So it's leveraging C++ compile time features, these const expr, they're called, and it generates like a, uh, you know, a slew of code, uh, a, a lot of code, um, right? But I can use that. Uh, you know, I, I don't have to rewrite, you know, uh, stuff manually. So then I have a thing that says, oh, you know, recognize a, uh, you know, I can call this isDate function, right? So if I pass it in a string, which is 2018.8.27, it returns true. If I return it, you know, if I pass it in two, you know, it returns false. Uh, and things like that. Um, so finally, I thought, you know, like kind of what uh, Brenton was talking about. There was an internal discussion, like because he was using those tools, the static analysis, and figured out, oh, there's some inefficiencies in some of the algorithms. So I thought, oh, you know, it would be nice to have a fast data structure uh, in uh, in 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 Mathematica, which is something that's a bit hard. So, so a common thing that we need to do in the compiler is to do union and intersection operations. And those are efficiently implemented in a thing called, in a data structure called bit vector. So we can define some, you know, kind of, uh, you know, common operations like bit vector create, bit vector, you know, create full is really like just set all the elements to one you know, turn off a certain element or turn, you know, toggle on a certain element, do a union operation, do an intersection operation, you know, check if something is set. So then once I have those functions, um, I can define some wrapper code. So, you know, just kind of make stuff pretty, like make boxes and, and things like that. Um, and then I can use it. So let's say I have a bit vector, which is, 
uh, apple, oranges, you know, some fruits, uh, and then I can remove orange. So in here, you know, this, this thing had orange element, this thing no longer has it. Um, and then I can create another vector, which is actually the original one, and then I could do the intersection of the two, and you know, it's just like uh, orange is no longer there, you know, so. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I could go in, you can use any of the kind of, any library that's in C++ or C. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting was I started working on uh, adding SIMD support for the compiler. Um, so it ends up like not, you know, so essentially you, you could define what, you know, you could define a new structure called like a, a vector, you know, a, a SIMD vector, so a, a short vector kind of instruction and give it a size. And you essentially can define overload what plus and times and things like that mean and call directly into the intrinsics, the, you know, x86 or, you know, uh, um, whatever ARM intrinsics to do the vector operations. And Essentially, if you do that, then, you know, you, first of all, you generate, you know, efficient code, uh, but also you could generate results. This is a four by four matrix multiplication, but you can generate performance that's similar to Intel's performance for those operations. Now, uh, but essentially, we're writing stuff in top level, they're writing stuff in assembly. So that's kind of the diff main difference. Um, and they have knowledge that we don't have. So I think I'll stop here. And